Hey, how you doing? David Taub here with Epic Guitar Instruction. Thanks so much for tuning in. We got a fun song lesson for you today. You're going to learn Simon and Garfunkel's classic, Mrs. Robinson. It's a pretty easy song, so if you're a beginner, um, no problem. Just eight open position chords, and I'm going to show you a way that you could strum it with basically one strum pattern through most of the whole song. Basically, the song has just three parts. You learn these three parts, they just repeat over and over again. There's that intro with that classic lick, which we're going to learn. Then there's a chorus, starts kind of goes from intro to chorus, which is interesting because most of the time it's intro to verse. Intro to chorus, intro part, chorus part, um, and then a verse. And then uh, they repeat the intro, and then it just keeps repeating, 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 and eventually the song fades out. Notice that I have the capo on the second fret. Okay, that's very important. And if you want to play along with the original recording, um, capo it up at the second fret. What I'm going to do, so as not to confuse you, is I'm going to give you the chord fingerings in their common names and in relative position to the capo. Just know that the actual pitch of these chords is a whole step higher because of the capo. But I don't want to confuse you, so I'm going to make this easy, just giving you the names in reference to the capo. So the first one fingering like an E7 chord, right? Um, a lot of seventh chords in this song, and the seventh chords have that twangy kind of sound. Uh, so E7, A7, A7 shape, okay? There's your D. G. I'm playing the G with four fingers, but if you want, you could play it with three fingers. Uh, there's a C shape. A minor. D7. And E minor. That's it. That's all the chords in the song. And it's, it's a great song. It's a fun song. Uh, it, it's from the bookends record. Uh, I believe it came out in like 1968, but this song was featured in the Graduate movie, which came out in late 1967. And if you haven't seen that movie, man, you really want to watch it. It's a great movie. Dustin Hoffman does such a great job. And I think it's so iconic because we could really relate to it. At least I could really relate to his character. He, The story basically is he comes home from college after graduating college, and he's just a lost soul. He doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. He thinks his life is meaningless and worthless. He can't relate to anyone. He's just a lost soul, and he plays that part so well. And he ends up having an affair with his father's uh, business partner's wife, Mrs. Robinson, right? And then ends up falling in love with uh, his his uh, father's business partner's wife's daughter. So it's it's a really interesting twist and turn. Fun movie. If you haven't watched it, put that on your and put that in your Netflix queue. Or uh, you want to watch that one. And it features a lot of songs from Simon and Garfunkel. And I'll tell you, man, that mu music at that time, 67, 68, their music on bookends and and that other record they did really defined, you know, the what was going on in that era. Uh, it was very important musically. This song, there's a lot of instrumentation going on, but we're gonna play it for one guitar, right? If you listen to it, you hear that, you know, that, that classic, that classic lick, and then you hear the guitar doing the muted kind of strumming, and then you hear that 12 string droning chords, right? So we're gonna strip it all down for one, and I'm gonna show you how you can do it with one guitar. Two different strum patterns, okay? So the first thing we have to tackle is that intro riff. Um, basically, the riff is this. That's the riff. E7 chord, right? Here's the lick. All right. Now, notice this first finger is staying down because I want that chord to ring out. And there's the substitution with the third finger because that allows me to get the second finger back quick for the strum, otherwise it's going to knock you off time. So, slowly, open E. Hammer on second fret with your second finger, open A, hammer on with the second fret, second finger. Same thing, just one string down. That's one pick each string. Pick, hammer, pick, hammer. Open D, third finger on that second fret. On the D string, two picks. And then just drop right back into the E7 chord with your second finger. This drum we talk, we're going to talk about. 
Now what we have to do is we have to play that lick four times, but you're playing a lick and then you're playing a strum on the E7 chord. And here's what I'm doing, slow. Right, that blount, ba blount, ba blount. And then you repeat the lick. So it's kind of like a down and then a chuck where I'm just kind of loosening pressure. I'm still holding the chord, but loosening pressure so you just get this muted sound. We're kind of combining, right, the percussive sound, the lick, the strumming, all for one guitar to give an accurate representation to capture the vibe of this song. I'm spending a lot of time on this, and excuse me if you're bored, but we got to get this down because, again, this is going to repeat throughout the whole thing. Once you get this down, you got most of it licked. It's just a matter of chord progressions, right? So do that down, chuck up. another down up and then that last down you kind of let it ring you just practice that and that's going to set you up for that next to play the lick again now together that's one We're going to change the strum and that's where the vocals come in with that that do 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 right uh on the e7 chord still so when i start off the song i usually let the low e string ring i just kind of like the sound of that so here's kind of what it sounds like up to speed Now you're going to go from that to a strum pattern that we're going to use in the chorus and in the verses pretty much. So you want to get this one down. And it starts again on that E7 chord. So you're going to hold that E7 and here's the strum we're going to do. Okay, what we're doing, if I just hold the strings. Again, this is very important to get down because we're going to use it throughout the song. Is we're going to do a down pick on the low E string or whatever chord we're on, we're going to pick the low root note. In this instance, E7 is the low E string, which is actually ringing out to F sharp because of the capo. I got to keep throwing that in there. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you though. What we're doing, low E string down pick, which I will notate as a DP for down pick with the strum pattern that you'll read in our famous on screen you know, strum pattern, or chord name, or whatever we might throw up there. Um, then what we're going to do is D, B down pick, D down strum, U up strum, right? Down pick, and then a down, 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 down pick, down, and then a down, up, down, up. one and two, and like a straight eighth note. And that's one measure, one bar. Practice that on the E7 chord. The, the uh, progression for this intro, which is very similar to the verse progression, is going to be the E7 to an A7 to a D to a G. We're going to change the strum a little bit there to a C, A minor, E7 to a D7. And here's to you, you and Mrs. Robinson. That's when that uh, chorus comes in. When you're on that E7, I'll play it, but I'll go slowly and I'll tell you when I make the change. You're gonna play that E7 five times. This is after we do it four times with the lick, right? We're gonna do that lick four times with that, with that you know, muted strum, and then we're gonna go into this down, 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 up, down, up, down, pick, down, down, up, down, up. So we're gonna do that E7 five bars, five times through that strum pattern. Then we're gonna go to the A7 four times. Now, notice on the A7, this down, pick down, same strum, but instead of we're strumming, picking that root note first, so you gotta switch to the A string. Right? Down, pick down, down, up, down, up, down, pick down, down, up, down. Let me play this intro slash verse section for you, and I'm gonna start it from the five times on that E7 chord. I'll play through the whole thing, and then I'm gonna go back and break it down and explain it. Here's what it'll sound like.
into the chorus, right? Okay, I did. you do have to change the strum pattern a little bit, but let me explain it. So on that E7 chord, right after we're done four times with the lick, you're gonna do that strum pattern five times, five bars, three, four, five. Then we're gonna go to the A7 chord for four times. Now when you do that, we switch that down pick now to the A string, because that's the low root note of that A7 chord. Four times. Now we go to the open D string because we got to play this D chord, but we got to change it a little bit because the chord gets broken up as far as how many times we're going to strum it. So on the D, and we want to replicate the vibe of the song. So on this D, you do that open D and then straight eight notes. Down, up, down, up, down. Then to the G chord, we're going to do this pattern. You're going to do, start with an upstroke. on the G, up, 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 down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up. Believe me, you'll get this. It just takes a little practice. Up, 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 down, up, down. So from that D, okay, that's the G. Then you got to go from that G to the C, and here's what I play there. I'm doing a little walking bass line, which kind of adds a little flavor to it. So on the C, Again, we're going to do that root note, down, up. So it's down, down, up, down, down, up. And then another down, down, up. But instead of fingering that uh, third fret on the A, switch to the second fret with your second finger. And then we're kind of playing this line to the A minor chord. So down, down, up, switch there. It's kind of like a C over B chord. So down, down, up, down, down, up. Now on the A, we go back on the A minor. We go back to that down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, for two measures. So here it is from that C. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. E7, twice with that pattern down, 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 down. Down to the D7. And on that D7, again, same thing. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. And it's twice on that D7th chord. And then we're into, and from there it goes to the G, and we're into the chorus, right? Sounds like a lot, but really it isn't. I, I kind of went over it really slow just to kind of get, get that in your head. Remember, this is fast. I mean, the original song is like 180 beats per minute. So if you want to set your metronome, but don't start it that fast. Start this very slowly until you're very confident and clean with the chord changes. Remember, the faster you strum, the faster you're gonna to have to change your chord. And if you're trying to play to the record and you don't have the chord changes down, it's gonna to lead to frustration. So slow at first, clean, and then slowly you could turn up the metronome, or slowly you could turn up the, the speed at which you're playing this. So let me play everything up to the chorus, right? So I'm gonna play the intro lick, like we talked about four times, uh, with that strum pattern, then the E7 chord five times through the whole progression, right? Right up to the G chord, which E leads us into the chorus. So if I play everything so far, and I'll do it slower um, than record tempo, it'll sound like this, just so you can hear it. right into the chorus section of the song. And that's, uh, and here's to you, Mrs. Robinson, right? So those changes are G for one time through the strum, one bar, E minor for one, G for one, E minor for one, C for two, D7 for two. Back to G for one, E minor for one, G for one, E minor for one, C for two, same as before. The only difference is the second time we go to the A minor for two. 
and then it goes back into the intro. Right? It does it two times before kicking into the verse. Um, okay, so that'll sound like this if I play it slow. And again, we're just going to use that same down, 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 up, down, up for all the changes this time. Sound like this. And here's to you. So that's the chorus, and all the choruses are exactly the same. No problem. Now, if you're having trouble changing from chord to chord in time with the strum, right? I could help you with that. Let me send you a free video lesson. I have a killer one. Just click on that link in the YouTube description box, and I will send you a free video lesson where I will teach you five essential chord changing tips will really blast your chord changing into the stratosphere. You'll learn five tips for proper fret hand techniques so you can check your technique because it all starts with the fret hand with your chord changing. So you'll learn all these chord changing techniques and fret hand te techniques and then I give you tons of exercises, musical sounding exercises to practice your chord changing and to get super, super proficient at it. So I'll send you that free video lesson and a free ebook where I, you know, draw out all the chords and there's more exercises. So I could really help you with that. Just click on that link and I'll send it to you for free. So now we know the beginning part with the lick. We know the intro. We know the chorus. And the last thing is the verses. And the verses of the song are pretty much the same as the intro. It's at E7 five times, just like before. A7 four times through the strum. Four bars. D7 now, not the D major like in the beginning. D7 for one. At G, C, a minor, we'll do that walking bass line, right? A minor for two, back to E7 for uh, two, to D7 for two. And that leads right back into the chorus again, right? So let me play you that uh, verse section. Uh, and this is where it would like, where we come in. We'd like to know a little about before our files, right? Like that's the first verse. So it kind of sounds like this. Same pattern again, that down, down, down. back into a chorus again. So after three verses and a chorus, the kind of the song kind of fades out on an intro lick and a chorus. So that's it. Um, that's the whole song, right? So after you get through that, you know, that intro, the two strum patterns, it's just a matter of putting those progressions together, practicing it slow at first, then moving up to speed, and you got it, no problem. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. It's a fun song to play, um, easy one to add to your catalog. And hey, if you like this lesson, if you wouldn't mind doing us a favor, um, click the thumbs up or the like button. Um, that really helps us out. You know, Leave a comment in the comment box. Let us know what you want to hear next. And also, please subscribe to the channel. Please click on that red subscribe button on the home page. Just click on this box here. Take you right to it. Click on that red subscribe button. We'll let you know we have new lessons coming out because we're putting stuff out all the time. I'm loading stuff up multiple times per week. Don't forget, click on that link below and I'll send you that free video lesson on easy chord changing techniques and principles in the ebook. You'll love it. Really get your chord changing. Super proficient, fast. Be like a Jedi Knight. Be like a Kung Fu master of chords. Yeah, and you'll have all kinds of fun. Uh, so click on that link. Thanks again for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Stay tuned. Lots and lots more coming. And I mean a lot. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Rock on.